Hi everybody. Welcome back to another afternoon of painting. I'm spilling water already. <laughs> I see that everybody is joining and I want to welcome you from Port Orchard, Washington. This is Danielle here from Rimber Illustration and today we are going to learn how to paint waterfalls using acrylic paint. Hi Burian, hi Auburn, Washington. Hello for, to Graham, hello everybody. I'm so happy that you guys uh, have all found me and have are able to join me today. Uh, we have been teaching paint and sip classes online during the shutdown for about three months now and regularly over the last couple of weeks we've been meeting every Wednesday at four o'clock and we are learning very basic drawing and painting techniques. And so uh, you can watch the replay if you are not able to catch the live video. If you just wanna sit and watch the magic happen on some canvas, you're more than welcome to do that. If you know someone else that would enjoy this video, feel free to share this video out and let them know what we're doing. All of our classes are made for all ages and all abilities, all experience levels. You don't have to know how to paint or draw at all. You just need the very basic supplies to participate, okay? So I am in Washington State in the United States. I know we have some people joining us from Canada and from other states. And if you are watching from the East Coast or other time zones, thank you for staying up and hanging out with us. I'm really excited to create with you all and just take a minute to relax and spend an afternoon of concentrating on something creative, something positive, something uh, peaceful and relaxing. Yay, Kalano painting with daughter, Zoom painting right on. This is a very safe way to gather with friends, family, and maybe possibly even meet some other people that share the same interests with you. I have done a few Zoom classes uh, for businesses and for parties and groups. The Facebook Live is a fun way to interact with everybody too. So um, I'm just happy to be able to do that. And thank you all for saying hello. I'm excited uh, to see all of you painting today. So before we get started, I'm just gonna show you guys what we are painting. We're gonna learn how to paint um, a little waterfall scene here and I will show you some different ways that you can adjust your painting and you know add little different details to it so that yours is uniquely your own. Um, your painting does not have to be portrait style like this. It can be landscape instead. So that means this is portrait and if you want it to be landscape, that would be horizontal. Okay, so that's the painting that we're gonna learn. If you guys wanna embellish or add extra things to it, feel free to do that. Um, but we're working with a very simple palette today. So I'm using acrylic paint. Uh, I have prepared a little palette ahead of time. All you need are the basic colors of black, white, blue, and yellow. If you have a premixed green, that's great. You don't need one because you can make green with blue and yellow and black. So these are the four main colors that you need, but I just added that one in there just for fun, okay? So I'm using acrylic paint, but if you have watercolor, or you only have crayons or markers or whatever, feel free to do what you can with what, with what you have, okay? I'm working on canvas today, but you could also rip out a page of a notebook, use a piece of cardboard. Um, if you have some wall space, you can certainly paint on the wall wherever you feel or deem necessary. Um, I do have a pencil. I don't know that we'll be using the pencil today, but it's always good to have on hand just in case. Uh, you can create this whole painting using just one flat brush, but if you have some other brushes, uh, here's the example. This is this is called a flat brush, okay, because it's got a square edge like that and it's narrow like this. Um, but you can, and I would suggest if you have a more textured brush, this has got like kind of horse hair, coarse bristles. If you have a brush like this or an old paint brush, works really well. One that maybe you painted and thought about throwing out but didn't quite use that. You could definitely use that instead. And then if you have a smaller detail brush. Cool, because if you want to add birds in the sky or you want to add some little small um, toads on a rock or you know fish in the pond or anything, it's always good to have another little 
small detail brush just in case. Hi Janice, hi John, hi Jasmine, hi Wanda, Ashley, you're beautiful. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys' support. Um, this is interesting times that we're living in right now. Uh, artists are always being creative, but especially right now, in order to make ends meet and to um, still bring you content and for me to be productive, I've had to especially rack my brain to figure out how to make uh, my business work and things going on. So I just wanna say ahead of time, thank you to all of you guys who have sent out um, tips or contributions or subscribe to my Patreon. That really does make a difference in helping me and my family survive and continue to do this work. Um, the classes that I'm offering today are free, so if you have the ability to, uh, um, to paint because you have supplies, um, but you don't have the ability to, to tip or make a contribution, that's great. I want everyone that has, um, you know, access to the internet or access to their computer or their phone uh, to have the ability to be able to paint along with us. And for those of you guys that are making contributions, thank you for doing that. Anyway, enough of that stuff. We're ready to paint, right? So water bowl to clean off your paint brushes. That's the first thing that you need. Um, if you have a paint rag or some paper towels to clean off your brushes, you'll need some of those. Um, if you don't have you know, a paper plate like this, you can use an old Tupperware lid or a plate from your kitchen or something like that. Um, and then a surface to paint on and we're good, good to go. So if you guys are ready to rock, uh, just give me some thumbs up and I'll flip the camera around and we'll start talking about what we're going to be creating today. I'm so happy to see so many different people from so many different areas. All right. So waterfalls. So the first thing that we're going to do in this painting today is we have to prep our surface. Uh, so we want to work backwards. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our surface with color and create a base for everything else to lay on top of. And then we're going to add, you know, all our fine little details last. So, um, like I said before, you can choose to paint your painting upright like this, or you can turn it, this is called portrait, or if you want your painting to be landscape, you would obviously just do a, a shorter waterfall in that direction. So a few things I wanna show you guys before we get started. Uh, we're paying attention to detail. You'll notice that like our sky is very simple. I'm just doing a very basic blue fade. If you wanna add clouds or birds or anything like that in there, you can absolutely do that. Uh, we have some green foliage around the waterfall, uh, but if you wanna add flowers or things, I'll show you guys how you can do that. Um, and then we've got our waterfall running into a babbling brook here with a few rocks and splashes and things to um, make a nice peaceful scene. I wish I was sitting on that rock right there, feeling the spray of that waterfall and the breeze and uh, smelling those trees. That's where I wish I was at right now. So anyway, here is our painting. So the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to get your flat paintbrush, okay? And we're gonna mix some colors. So we're gonna divide our canvas into two sections, okay? So we're going to make our blue sky where uh, the, the section above the waterfall, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to paint this area like this, and then everything else below that, we're gonna paint black. Okay, so we want our sky to be fairly light because we want it to be a nice sunny day. So I'm gonna touch into my blue, but I don't need a whole lot, okay? So I'm just gonna do that and add a lot of white to it. And I don't need to really mix my colors a whole lot because when I'm running my brush across the surface, that'll do most of the blending work for me, okay? So I wanna have a good amount of paint. I'm gonna start at the top of my canvas and I'm gonna hold my brush nice and low push firmly, and then I'm gonna go all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and continue to do that. But as I'm doing that motion, I'm also going to gradually work my way down the canvas, okay? So then you can get a little bit more blue, a little bit more white, and then you can continue and repeat that process until we get to about, oh, I don't know, like a quarter of the way 
down the surface to about right there, okay? So the idea here is we wanna create a very, very nice light blue sky. And what I will tell you also is add a little bit more white to your brush as you go down so that your sky gradually gets a little bit lighter. And the reason why we want to do that is we want to provide a really nice contrast of light and dark. So if our sky is nice and light, when we put those green, uh, green bushes and stuff on there, they'll really be popping out. Okay, so we want to put enough paint on our surface that our brush glides easily across the canvas or across the paper or across the cardboard or whatever you're working on. Okay, and if you can see the grid of the canvas, so I'll just zoom this in so you guys can take a quick look. Okay, so if you can see the grid of the canvas like this, that means you don't have enough paint. And so to solve that issue, you either need more paint or you need to push more firmly. And the more you run your brush back and forth, the more smooth that will blend out, okay? If you have so much paint that you can scoop it off with your finger, that means you need to blend it out and use less, less paint, okay? So we're, gonna, we're not gonna be super calculated with this. It's okay if our brush strokes are a little streaky, but I do want to use nice and long brush strokes going all the way to the right and all the way to the left. So I can work my way back and forth, but gradually move up and gradually move down. And what this will accomplish is it will accomplish a smooth blend from the top to the bottom of the area that we're painting. So we won't have any hard lines. It'll just be nice and even. And so, if you notice some white or light patches on your canvas, you can start at the top and do a second layer and work your way down, okay? So we're gonna do a nice light blue, and if there's some streaks of um, darker or lighter in a few areas, that's okay. Uh, but we're gonna fill up about a quarter of the canvas, okay? And if you're using a stretched canvas that has sides and a top and a bottom, I will also encourage you to paint the sides just to make it a nice finished piece, okay? And if your line isn't perfectly straight, don't worry about that because like I said, we're gonna be adding bushes and things um, along the top of that, so no big deal, okay? So once we have our blue on here, Like I said before, you're gonna do all this about a, a quarter of the way down and then you can clean off your brush and then you're going to do a nice thin coat of black all the way down the rest of the canvas. You saw all those bright colors in there and it seems contradictory, but I'll show you why it's important and why it'll work later on in the painting, okay? All right. Back and forth, so nice and smooth, but it's okay, like I said, if some areas are darker and some areas are lighter, it just adds a little bit more interest to your painting. Here, let me get centered again here. Make sure we're all there, and then make sure we're all on the same page. Does everybody have the tools they need? Is everybody um, able to follow along okay? How's the connection? How's the volume? How's the picture? Yes, Trina, you absolutely can come back and watch this video later. So I've been doing the classes free for the last three months. What I'm uh, doing now is because we're kind of transitioning back into uh, phases two, then to three and four, is um, I'm taking the free classes and I'm leaving them up for about a week. And then after a week, I'm taking them down and I'm adding them to my Patreon page. And so what my Patreon page is, um, is it's where I put all of my content. So if you liked painting once with me and you wanna have access to all of my classes all the time, anytime you want, you can subscribe to the Patreon page for $20 a month and you can have access to all of my painting classes, extra drawing tips, um, 
I send you free art and postcards. There's coloring pages that you can download and color in there. Uh, and I post the link to the Patreon so you can definitely go and check that out if that's something you're interested in. Uh, if you don't want a monthly subscription, you can just do it for one month and then come back and, um, you know, unsubscribe and, and don't do any more after you get what you want from that. So that's kind of an advantage. But yeah, this this video will be up for about a week after um, I post it here. So after you get your nice light blue sky, you can clean off your brush and then you're going to paint the rest of your canvas black. Okay, and don't worry if it's not completely. So remember, this is just going to be a base coat and we're gonna be painting everything else over the top of this. So this coat does not need to be really thick. We want it to be actually pretty thin uh, so that it dries quickly and that we're able to lay other colors over the top of it, okay? So we're gonna do black and this is going to provide a base for us and provide the shadow uh, for our waterfalls and for the shrubbery and everything else later but we need to have that base down in order for this to work for us. So nice thin coat of black. Make sure that you're running your brush over it multiple times. This will do two things. It will help even out the paint, but it will also push it into the surface and it will help it to dry more quickly. What I like to do is I like to put paint on my brush and then run it across the surface and then blend until I cannot blend anymore and then I get more paint. There we go. But yeah, so you should have light blue sky, a little section up above, and then all the rest, we're gonna have a nice dark shadow and this is gonna be called a light art. This is a light on dark technique. It's like what um, velvet painters use when they're painting velvet paintings. So you use the contrast of the lighter color to pop against um, the black of this. So what you will notice is you may notice some little speckling on your canvas. And the reason why that happens is because uh, this is the first layer of paint we're putting on the surface. And so that's gonna absorb into there and we need to push it into the canvas so that we can create a skin across the surface so that all the other paint lays on there nice and smooth and doesn't continue to absorb into the surface, okay? So if you're not getting nice smooth brush strokes, it's either because you don't have enough paint, you're not using enough pressure, or you're not running your brush across the paint enough times. So we don't want to only run our brush across in one area. We want to use the motion of going from right to left, but then also gradually working our way up and working our way down so that we're able to merge everything together, okay? All right. And if you have fun painting today, next week we're going to be painting um, a fairy and you're going to learn how to paint bubbles. And I don't mean Washington State fairy, I mean like magical fairy with wings. You're going to learn how to do a cool silhouette uh, figure and then we're going to make some magical bubbles and you can paint along with that as well. And so if you don't know how to find that event, you can go back to Rembert Illustrations uh, business page on Facebook and you just go up to the main menu at the top of the page and uh, swipe to the right and you can find the event schedule uh, in in that menu there and you just click interested or going so you get updates on how to find that class and I've only been posting um, classes like a week or two out because Things are so uncertain right now. I just want to kind of follow and keep current with the events, and I don't want to schedule too far ahead and, um, you know, get ahead of myself. So uh, just watch the schedule. You can subscribe to the page. You can uh, like and follow so you can get updates on different things that are going on. And like I said, um, 
you know, I'll update it so that we have at least something every week, you know, and I'll go like a couple weeks out ahead of time, but not too, too far ahead um, like that. But I'm also doing uh, people that are looking for like birthday party ideas or family gatherings. I've been doing Zoom meeting parties where uh, companies that are doing team building activities can get together and I'm teaching people how to paint. I taught uh, a class to all the foreign exchange students in Kitsap County that were that are still here during the shutdown uh, so that they were all able to work together and paint and learn something new together. So there's lots of different options for creating. If you don't see uh, a class here that you're interested in, in doing, but you have a suggestion for something you like to see, just send me a message and I'd be happy to work with you. So I'm only using this, you can use a bigger brush if you have a bigger brush, um, but the size brush that I gave everyone in their paint kits for people that purchased one from me was this size. And so I just wanna make sure that I'm using the same tools as everybody else, and I wanna show you that you know, you can create a whole painting using minimal supplies. But if you're in a hurry and you want to get things done and you want to barrel through, you can definitely use a much bigger, bigger brush to, to paint this surface. But I also want to show you that if this is the only, if this is the last brush on earth and the only one you had, you could create this whole painting just using this. It's about being resourceful, people. We want to be resourceful. Uh, with our paint supplies, sometimes not everything, especially right now, is readily available. And so we want to keep it as simple as possible. Nice uh, primary colors, very simple palette of, or palette of colors, um, you know, minimal amount of paintbrush supplies. But yeah, use what you got. If you have other stuff that you can use, definitely use it. All right. So... I got all of my canvas painted here. What I'm gonna do after I have finished and painted everything across the whole canvas is I'm actually gonna clean off and dry off my brush. So if you're curious how to clean off your brush, I like to stab the bottom of the water bowl. So I stab the bottom of the water bowl to get all the paint out from the stem and then I give it a nice good uh, wipe and dry, okay? and then. What I like to do, just to make sure that the canvas is ready for the next step and all our paint is pushed in and dry, is I like to take that dry paintbrush and run that over the surface to make sure that so any shiny spots that are still wet, I'm spreading that paint out. Um, any thick areas I can thin out and balance and even, and I can smooth the surface to make sure that um, that's ready for the next step. And the longer and wider your brush strokes are, uh, the more even and smooth your surface will be. And if you're having a trouble uh, making smooth brush strokes, instead of pointing your brush straight, try kind of laying your brush at an angle and flat against the surface. That way when you lift up, you leave less of a mark on the surface, okay? And don't worry if you have a few little marks and spots because like I said, in the beginning, we're gonna be painting over all of this anyway. So I just wanna make sure. And then if you've made your water too dark and it's all dirty, this is a great time to go ahead and get clean, clean water. So if you need to empty your water bowl and get a clean bowl of water, you can go ahead and do that. We want our canvas to dry a little bit and then we can move on to the next step. So I live in Kitsap County in Washington, and for those of you guys that are local uh, to me, if you don't have painting supplies but you need them or you know somebody that would like some but does not have access to be able to get them, uh, you can send me a message, and I am putting together kits for people, and you can either do a safe uh, no contact pickup or uh, if you're within a reasonable distance of me, I can definitely arrange a drop-off for you, okay? And what comes in the paint kit is a pencil, at least one paintbrush, unless the activity requires more than one, um, a stretched canvas, usually 
eight by 10, sometimes nine by 11 stretched canvas, and then all the primary colors. So I have little sealed cups of white, black, red, yellow, and blue. And then so if you need to make any other colors, then you can definitely do that. So, um, so we have our canvas prepared. This is our back surface with our base. So we have our light blue sky. So I'm just gonna put the original painting here so you guys can kind of see where we're at. So we have our light blue sky, and then we have our black background, and if you look closely at this painting, you can definitely see all the black kind of peeking through in that area there. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add layers on here. So we're gonna create an outline of where we want our waterfall to, to fall on our canvas. And then we're gonna add um, our waterfall in and then we're gonna add shrubbery around that. So once you have all this set up, you are gonna take a clean brush or go back to the same brush that you had and you can add um, some white to a little bit of your black to make a nice gray color. Okay, and so what we're gonna do with the gray color is we're gonna define where we want our waterfall to be. So in the original painting, I had the waterfall fall in the center, but if you want it to be off to the side, you can. Uh, but I'm just gonna take the gray paint that I mix on my palette, and I'm gonna create a couple of curved shapes, one on this side and then one on the other side. And I'm not completely worried if this is all totally filled in. Uh, we just are using it as a base for this is where our waterfall is gonna fall next to. So see, I'm taking a little bit of gray paint, not a lot, and I'm just gonna lightly blend in a like a, a giant rock shape. So you'll notice I didn't go all the way to the bottom of the canvas. I only went about halfway down my black section because down here is gonna be our babbling brook or our little uh, water where all of the waterfall ends up going into. So see, I create a gray section here and you'll notice how I leave a little curved section off to the side there. So nice thin coat because we want this to dry. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And these do not have to be symmetrical, guys, because remember, it, it's nature and, you know, funky stuff happens. So this can be, you know, kind of lopsided or more lumpy if you want it to be. Um, but you can also adjust it. So if I wanted to leave like a little, add a little bit bump to the side to make it a little more interesting, uh, I can do the same thing on the other. Don't make these exactly the same because that's kind of boring. So I'm just gonna take my light gray and I'm, it's okay if it's like not a perfect line. You can make it nice and wiggly, but come down. And then we're just gonna paint in on both sides. So I've got one over there and one over here. Nice thin coat of light gray. And this is just an identifying point, it's just so we know this is where we want our waterfall to go when we paint that in. It's also buying us time because while we're painting these in, uh, our black paint is all drying. So nice and light, which means we have black on our canvas already and we don't need to have lots more black. We want this to contrast so that we're able to see, oh, we're able to see where it's landing and we can spread and thin that out. And like I said, don't worry if it's not perfectly blended and there's some splotchiness or areas where it's not completely covered or smooth because remember how many bushes and shrubs we're gonna be adding on top of this later, okay? So those shapes that you're adding in right now are gonna equate to where all the greenery is gonna be later, okay? So our first step was to paint a light blue sky in this upper section up here about a quarter of the way down the canvas. Then we painted the rest of our canvas in a nice thin coat of black, okay? So after we, com we completed that first step, the second step is going to be to take white and a little bit of black to make a nice light gray color. 
and I'm going to do a curved lumpy bumpy rock on the right side of my canvas so notice how it curves right here on this side so it's not a sharp edge and then it ends about halfway down that black section or a little bit lower so that we have a dark space for our water to be later and then I do the same thing on the other side so see look it doesn't have to be beautiful and perfect because it's just an outline and we're gonna be painting over it later okay if you want bits of this rock to be peeking out later, um, you can definitely smooth certain sections of it and then add um, greenery in selected spots. It doesn't have to be all over, like in the original, in the original painting, okay? So there's that, that's our base for creating our very basic outline for this painting, okay? So after you have light blue, black, and then you do our nice, big black stones, right, or gray stones, you're gonna clean off your brush again. A lot of cleaning your brush in this class, guys. And then we're gonna talk about how to create some water on the surface. So, today we are using a flat brush, but if you were gonna get expensive and really invest time into painting and, um, doing some other stuff you could buy what is called a fan brush and you might have seen that if you've ever watched bob bob ross and basically it's a flat brush but it's thinner than this and it looks like a fan so it's curved apart and the reason why a fan brush works really well for creating a waterfall is because the bristles are all separate they all separate from each other like this leaving gaps and so the reason why that's important with the waterfall is in order to create the illusion of motion or action, we don't necessarily want all of the, um, the water to be all blended and perfectly smooth. We want it to look like, you know, there's some bumps and rocks and, uh, you know, have different separations of color. So you'll notice in here, when we make the, you know, when you have the waterfalls, it's not all perfectly, um, perfectly one color. There's light, there's white, there's light blue, there's darker blue, um, lots of different stuff in there, okay? So that's the first part here. So what we're going to do first, before we paint in our waterfalls, is we are going to take our, our little brush like this, and we're going to create some bushes on top of the the black line and above the gray here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take so if you only have blue and white you can mix a little bit of blue and white together to make a green and what I like to do is I like to only partially mix it so I have some light and dark on my brush okay um, so if you have green already I suggest that you take green and yellow and do the same thing. But if you only have blue and yellow, mix those together so that you have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green on your brush, okay? And so in order to create little bushes, we're just gonna use a little tapping motion. 